recognizing the change makers. You are in the room because you are a change maker. We're here to give you drive. We're here to give you motivation. We're here to give you access to resources. And we're getting ready to do this work because we are change makers. Is that right, y'all? Yes. We are. We are. Change makers. Change makers. We are. We are. Change makers. Change makers. You heard it firsthand. It's going down. We in the classroom seat. Hold it, your girl. Jamila T. Davis, and you're tuning in for another episode of Social Justice in Action, where we bring community to the classroom. Now, without further ado, of course, we want to bring in our first Seton Hall University's community, the Center of Community Research and Engagement, our first community practitioner and scholar, my friend, my colleague, oh. Dr. Jamila Davis. Let's give it up. <laughs> say this has got to be one of the greatest honors that I've had in my lifetime, right? So going from inmate number 59253053 to being Professor Davis at Seton Hall Ooh, University, wow, wow, wow. it just shows that all things are possible. Oftentimes, you know, we like to put ourselves in a box, right? If you're from the hood, you want to be with the people from the hood, you the intellects, you want to hang out with the intellects, you the violence interrupters, you want to be over there. But to the truth is, it really takes a village, right? It takes the whole community to get on one accord to be able to create change. And there's no little me's, big you's. We all are significant, right? You might see things from one lens, I might see it through another. So this class is gonna be about discussions. What do you feel? What do you think? What do you see? What lived experience do you have that matters, that can help us create change? So we're all in the room and we all matter. So I want you to know that. So we did a few brief introductions just to understand some of the things that we can do to create change. One, we already spoke about policy. Two, creating departments such as Mayor Ross Baraka. Those that are online that don't know, Mayor Ross Baraka, what he was able to do is, as the mayor, he took 5% of the city's budget for police and for public safety, and he created the Violence Prevention Department. And this department primarily creates programs and preventatives to crime. So you guys are a part of something so unique. Many of you may take for granted, um, that, wow, we got a full house. We did, you know, clap it up for a full house. <laughs> I really wasn't expecting to turn out to be like this. So just for folks that's in the room, we got a couple of reporters in the room too that are taking stories down, you know, some that don't really like to be mentioned. But as you take the story down, people say that we don't want to learn. But as you see, the room is filled up with folks that are eager, folks online that are eager to suck in this quality education. We have the Office of Violence Prevention represent, if you're from the Office of Violence Prevention, raise your hand. New York Office of Violence Prevention, Give it up, give it up to them. Online we have um, A.T. Mitchell. It's a pleasure to be back in amongst you all's company and my comrades out there in, in, in Newark, um, Office to Prevent Gun Violence and so many others. My organization, as you mentioned, is called Man of Pink. I founded that now 18 years ago this year. And so I'm really proud of the fact that we've been able to get as close to two decades of being a CBO on the ground. And um, we're always about learning. That's why we, I have my team on. We, we're about growing and we're about learning because you can never you know, say you know enough in this work. And so I'm looking forward to this class and what we're going to learn, what we're going to take away and, and apply it right here in, um, throughout the streets of, of the United States. Uh, we have Katora Haran, who I spoke to earlier, who's all the way from Kentucky. Yeah, because thank you, Dr. Davis, for having me. My name is Katora here, and I'm in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I work as a, a policy strategist at the ACLU. And so um, last year, everyone knows that Breonna Taylor was murdered um, here in Louisville. And um, I helped draft uh, the ordinance, Brianna's Law, to ban no knock warrants here in Louisville. We were able to do that in 17 days. And so uh, we were able to also take that to the state level. It's a plethora of people who have lived experiences and do on boots on the ground work in community. And then guess what? It wouldn't be fun unless we have a little competition with it, right? Yeah. We got to have a little bit of 
competition with it. So we have a $5,000 reward to the group, right? That pulls up their sleeve. Y'all like that, that 5K, okay? 5K online, 5K, 5K online, 5K in the room to those that put together um, a, a community project and Dr. Rios is going to go over with you exactly what that looks like, what that means. And what we're, we're piloting today, in which Dr. Davis mentioned, is this interdisciplinary approach to solving co problems in our own community. So often you know if something happens on the block, somebody makes a change, but you're not a part of that conversation. That's usually what happens. Or something happens in the news and they say, okay, well look, this is what happened. There was an incident that happened, you know, so-and-so go with this block, go put it in service rather than us being proactive about what happened. So this is really how this uh, program came about. And it's a partnership. This is a partnership between Howard University, Yale University, Until Freedom, Seton Hall University, Mandela Institute, so the grant, and Dabba Mandela, the grandson of Nelson Mandela, will be one of your faculty members. You have Dr. Davis, you have Angelo Pinto, you have individuals who are experts in their field to be their, your faculty members in this process. So these are individuals who are going to be, and we have South Orange Village, because as we know, these borders don't exist. What happens in South Orange affects Newark, what happens in Newark affects South Orange. So we need to come together as a community and not have these, these, these invisible borders be where we stop working. We're letting go all of the egos outside this door that does not exist here. We have a lot of folks here represented from different organizations, online different organizations, but this is a community, one community. So if you're working on a project in Newark, in Brownsville, the West Ward, South Ward, whatever it is, you are working together to be able to address that problem as a community. We're not waiting for nobody to get it done. Come on. Mm. We're not waiting for nobody to get it done. We're not waiting for the government. We're not waiting for this pally. I love you, South Orange. But we're not waiting for nobody to get it done. Right. We in this room are going to create enough community to create bond to start that to start to trigger that action to happen. That's the goal behind this. There's no other certificate program in any university, in any program that's going to tell you, look, we're going to give you the skills. We're to collaborate together, and we'll give you the money to do to make some change happen directly. Come on. So we gotta do it ourselves. And really, I really the, the why is to the, the, is, is to show that if we have more of these programs, and we have universities, we have our our, 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 our governments investing in these type of programs, that we define what safety is like for us. Right. So a lot of times we go to school, but then we miss the practical piece, because they, they they talking over here and you like, all right, how does this help me, right? How many of y'all want in here want to secure the bag? Who like to sit online? Who like to secure bags online, right? Okay, all right. So who likes to get paid for what you love to do? Who likes that? Okay, okay. So now I'm gonna fast forward you to me, Dr. Davis now, right? So I came into the game straight from prison, right? And in prison, I was the recreation clerk. I had no idea that God was using me at that time to get me ready for this greater work that I do today, right? So this that I'm doing today is something I've done dozens of times, if not hundreds of times in the prison. We start a new class, set it up, we gotta do sign-ups, we gotta make sure folks come in. I did not realize that I was gaining a skill set, right? That I was able to then take into the streets. And I went first to the school system and I started selling programs to schools and then I was able to get into communities and then cities, right? A lot of you guys are equipped to do exactly what I do. Somebody in here can do it even better but you can't do it until you understand the formula of how to do it, right? So I was in Mississippi yesterday with some influencers in the city. These are dudes that came out of the street. They have a desire to go into their community and create programs to help the people on the ground. But guess what they're missing, right? They're like, yo, Jamila, we go to this one, we talk to that bay and this bay, and nobody's giving us a bag. Can somebody tell me why you think they haven't been able to get a bag yet? Anybody want to guess why you think they haven't been successful? They never put together a proposal. Mmm, they haven't put together a proposal. Good stuff. Why, why else? Presentation. 
presentation, right? So you might want to do something, but if you don't know how to package it and how to talk the language that Dr. Rios is giving you, so you need to go home and learn this stuff. You need to understand what it means. So when you want to go into your community and create programs and you want to present it to somebody, you understand, okay, this is a proposal, right? This is what it should look like. I should be talking these terms, right? And that's the way that you put yourself in position to get the bag to do something greater for your community. You got to learn this so that you can take this back to the community and teach Raheem enough. Because to be honest with you, like they said, the young boys in the street, they not listening to somebody outside coming in. They, they don't care about that. But they gonna listen to the big homies though, right? Mm -hmm. But if the big homies don't position themselves to get the bag to create change, then how can it happen? It won't, right? So this class and classes such as these are positioning the shockers of the world. Salute, big homie, right? To be able to take the formula back to the community. And this is how we create change, right? And I tell folks this all the time. A lot of misconception of people who see us in urban communities, they think people are robbing, stealing, cheating just because they want to. People are looking to get to the back. So any course you see me a part of, downward or around, I'm gonna teach you how to get to the back, right? Because if you don't get to the back, you'll never really be able to create change. Mm -hmm. And that's the bottom of line. So we're learning about social justice now, but trust me, we'll be up to financial literacy next because that's really what it's all about. When we empower our people, we create change. So I'm gonna ask y'all to repeat after me every single line. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and protect each other. We must, we must love, love and protect each other. Protect each other. <laughs> we have nothing to lose but our chains. We have, we have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and protect each other. We must love and protect each other. We have nothing to lose with our chains. 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 All right, let's talk about it. Now we're gonna break into groups, y'all. So as you go into your groups, one, introduce yourself. Okay? What is your name? Where do you live? Where do you work? Alright? We're gonna start off with a brief icebreaker. So your brief icebreaker, Leslie, your brief icebreaker is if I had a superpower, what would it be your why? Alright? Superpower. If I had a superpower, what would it be your why? Then you're gonna ask, okay, then you're gonna move into your questions. If I could change something in my community, what would it be? What was yours? Mass produce money. Mass produce money. Okay, all right. But fear said if we operate in love, which surpasses all understanding, okay. everything is possible. Exactly. Uh -huh. He says he wanted to develop two parent households. Okay, the bring it back, bring it back. Because the women have been doing it for so long. Mm. I thought it was imperative to hear a man say. Mm. No, we need to bring the men back in the house mm. to help the women. And I wanted to establish independent housing to teach people how to live independently, teach people how to pay bills, because what I noticed 90% of all the young ladies that get low-income housing, the men move with them, mm. right? So it's good to teach these men how to independently establish themselves and start bringing the women with them, learn to take the lead. So in all of this, Wafia asked us, do you think that it's possible with all the things we got going on, pandemic, AIDS, crap, everything that's going on, losing a lot of people, you think we could do this? So she said, well, I don't know if we could get them to buy into it. So Cass hits us with, if we are confident and believe we can, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what they think. Uh, right now, uh -huh. come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Four groups. I'm not sure. Was there 
any more unrepresented groups that didn't get to go? Anybody from online? Was you in a group that we didn't speak about? Any more for online? Yes, there's one more. There's one more, group four. Okay, group four, and tell me who you are and who who is in your group. Okay, so... Yes, one, high school one, student one, with the camera one, on. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so hi, everyone. My name is Asante Grant, and in my group, we had Mr. Tizem Mil Milinar. Christina Brown and myself. And so the superpower that we talked about is um, teleportation, reading minds, and flying. And a few other things that we talked about other than the introductions, introducing ourselves and what we do, um, is that we want to change like the garbage within the, our community. So we talked about us high schoolers, an after-school program where we clean our streets and and then we put them in their respective bins. Because the thing is that when people see kids or one person doing something, then they're encouraged to do it as well. So that way we as a community can come together to start cleaning our streets and put them away. And we can get more garbage bins as well because sometimes when they're full, we tend to put them beside it and it just blows all over the place. So we want to clean our streets and just make it clean and proper. So that's what that's what we talk can about. You talk about One more second. What school do you go to? I go to the Academy for Scholarship and Entrepreneurship. Okay, I know your principal very well. So now let me ask you a question. Do you know why it was important to us to have high school students in a class such as this? Could you just take a guess about why it was important to us to have someone such as yourself here tonight? Well, to make an educated guess, I believe it's because you want us to know about the situation in our communities and you wanted um, ideas of for teenagers to see what, what we can do to contribute to that. But I think it's more about being aware as young as we are and being able to make that change that you are implementing right here. Absolutely. Clap it up for her. So I want to do something for you for your participation tonight. Nope, nope. You got to turn your screen back on. I have something for you, but you got to promise me you got to keep the screen on to get this prize that I have for you, okay? No. I have a prize for you Okay. All right. for your participation tonight as a high school student, okay? I got a $50 gift certificate that Ooh. I'm going to send you. Clap it up for her. <laughs> is to sow into your life we want to let our children know that your voice matters and it doesn't matter tomorrow it matters now we want you to know as young people you have the power and you have the ability to create change now that's why you're in the room and that's why you have a seat at the table because your voice matters we want you to know that is that right guys yeah. it's not just a class it's just not just a certificate program it's an alliance we're galvanizing the change makers. You are in the room because you are a change maker. You are online because you are a change maker. The purpose of this course is to educate, stimulate, and activate the change makers. Educate, stimulate, and activate the change makers. We're here to give you drive. We're here to give you motivation. We're here to give you access to resources. You will meet the gatekeepers, right? In towns, when you go to certain places that you want to do business in or you want to set up shopping, you need to meet the gatekeepers so they can tell you how to set up, how to get funded, right? So that's going to be a part of the course. So if we do our part and you do your part, then we'll create change together. Is that absolutely. right, Dr. Rio? Absolutely, absolutely. So my message tonight is to the change makers of the world, to those that are in positions of power, to those that are, are, are people that are gatekeepers, that are over finances, funding, you're over policies, you're over conditions of our community. We want you to know today, and we want you to take a look at us, that we deserve a seat at the table, right? And because many of us have not been given a seat at the table, we are pulling up our folding chairs, and we are coming to the table, and we're demanding change. We're no longer looking for people to come into our communities and tell us what to do. 
We know that through the power of civic engagement and through the power of education that we have a voice and that we will in fact make a difference. So today you're seeing something unique. We are allowing you to take a part of history and this is the history that we are creating here at Seton Hall, is that right? Can I get some cheers? All right. smart enough to know that we need each other because if we are going to change and destroy and disrupt poverty in our communities you have to reach the people who are closest to the problem and they will in fact be the solution so today sir and ma'am you are seeing amongst us the solution right educated people about this work we're here in community we're pulling up our sleeves and we're getting ready to do this work because we are change makers is that right y'all yes. yes. so i want you to Change makers. Change makers. We are change makers. Change makers. You heard it firsthand. It's going down. We in the classroom. Seton Hall is your girl. 